Uh, it just took several different uh, reboots of my computer to get OBS to actually recognize Twitch as a uh, valid output stream. Let's do a quick audio check. Yep, that's all working. We'll pop this. Uh, we should be all good there. We got chat on the right. Let's send this out on Twitch and on Slack. Perfect. So, um, all right. Let's uh, let's take a look at what's going on. What is uh, sort of what is our where, where are we at right now? Okay. So currently at we're at uh, this area, which is uh, chapter, I believe. Chapter 9.2, Recoverable Errors with Result. And uh, we're specifically in the Propagating Errors section. Uh, Miguel, hello, hello, good morning. Um, when you're writing a function whose implementation calls something that might fail, instead of handling the error within this function, you can return the error to the calling code so that it can decide what to do. This is known as, okay, yeah, so the propagating error thing, I think we actually, did we implement that? Um, I guess, I don't think we did. So I'm gonna create a new cargo, new, Propagating errors. We'll go into that and open up code here. So if we take a look at what's going on here, uh, we sort of had looked at it before, but um, I need to, to re-remind myself what, what it is. Uh, basically, we, are, uh, we have this function. Uh, it's not the main function. And it says, okay, it's gonna return a result, uh, which is either going to be a string or an error. And it's gonna be a type of IO error. Of, of like, so there's only like, there's, a, there's, there's many errors that could be, I guess, but this one's gonna be a specifically IO error um, enum. So then, then inside of this, we attempt to open the file, and uh, if that works, we get the file into F. Otherwise, we get uh, get the error, which then we just return the error, which I mean is a result type. So let mu s equals string new. So we create a new string on the heap. Then we then we do another match because we're going to read from the string. Uh, we pand at the string, and if everything is okay, we just we just return s, which is what is what is read into. Uh, otherwise, we um, we get the error, and then we return the error. Back. So what they don't put here is what it's going to look like on this other side. So in the main function, we're going to be we're going to be calling this. So we're going to be saying something like um okay, we want to uh let um I'm going to close up my side here. So let let contents equals and we're going to say like read file and maybe we'll hand it like hello dot txt but the context is really going to be a, a result right so um maybe before i actually write that let's let's write this other function down here we're going to say function um read contents 
uh, from file, we're going to take in a file name, which is going to be a type. I, I think really just like, do we really need ownership of this? I mean, maybe, maybe it'd be a good idea. Maybe we can just do, it's a, um, it's a reference to a string. And we're going to return a result uh, which has, okay, so we're going to return a string. So like a true string on a heap because we don't know what size it is. Uh, otherwise, if we take a look at this, otherwise the type of error that's going to be returned. So in this case, it's going to be IO error. See if that causes any problems. Oh, we probably want like standard IO. Are they just bringing in? Yeah, they're bringing in standard IO like that. So we're going to want to do the same thing. So then now now this is available to us. Yep, now we're now we're not like actually returning the thing that we say that we're going to return. Uh, which means that we need to uh, use standard um, IO uh, standard FS file because now we can say okay, so let our let our file equals um, and it's going to be file open. And then the path is going to be the file name. Now they sort of have this uh, uh, have this mute for the match here. I suppose that we could let this be mute f because we're shadowing. So it's becoming immediately overwritten with a mutable version, like with a mutable, where we say, okay, match f. If it's okay, we we open the file. I kind of wonder whether or not this would be best as, okay, uh, stacking, just went and fell, fell asleep listening to your smooth voice. It made you late for work. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to make you go to sleep for work. Um, but thank you for watching and then coming back to risk going to sleep again. Uh, so let's match this. Um, we're going to semicolon that. Okay, so match file open. Uh, so we're going to have an okay that has the file in it. And if it does, we're going to return this file. Otherwise, we're going to get an error with a uh, error in it. And if that happens, we want to fully return the error with air. Expected enum standard result result found absolutely nothing. I think that's because this thing could happen. So like this is one of the arms that could happen and this is fine because it'll go down this branch. But this one, uh, we, still, we still haven't like, there's still one possibility that we're not returning. You're super tired anyway. I might fall asleep while driving, so. Well, th th thank you for letting me accidentally lull you to sleep instead of on the road. Um, that's, uh, I guess that's better. Um, okay, so we get trial match, we get all this stuff. Okay, so um, what we want to do now is actually attempt to read from this file, uh, which of course means we need our string, so we could have like our, our content. So let mutable content equals string new. And then we want to say, okay, uh, file dot, um, read to string, and then we're gonna pass it a reference to content. Oh, it's a mutable reference to content. 
uh, and I want to match on this as well. Um, and we're not going to do anything. We're not going to use a semicolon with this because this is what we're actually going to return in the end. So uh, this is going to be okay, which, uh, which we don't really care what it passes in. I, I believe it passes in a, a number of like maybe what, what was read, like the bytes or the bits. And, uh, but really, if, if this works, we want to respond with OK and the, uh, the content. Otherwise, it's going to be, um, we're going to get the error, which has the error message. And then we're going to return the error with the error message. No method, read the string, right, because we need to bring that, we need to bring in the, uh, the, the typing, is that what it is? So it's a standard, it actually tells us what we want. Which is really sad that we can't see that in here. I wonder if I run this as it is, even though I'm not using this function, uh, if that would work. And I just realized I'm gonna save the file. Let's go ahead and let's actually try to run this, so cargo, yeah, so it's saying, okay, use standard IO read. And so that should make that error go away. This is never used now. So now the idea is, okay, we have this, we have this function. It's going to turn this result. So we're either going to, we're going to get an okay with the contents, or we're going to get um, uh, an error. So uh, I wonder if we could say, uh, if I could say um, let content equals, and then we're going to have the read, read contents from file, and our file name is going to be um, hello.txt. And then I should be able to put like a dot x, um, is a dot expect or a dot, what's the other one? It was, I can't, I can't remember off the top of my head. I thought we just did it last time too. Oh, it was unwrap and expect. So I saw that. So it's expect. And so if we get the error, uh, the message that we're going to send is um, there was an error. Uh, reading the file. That goes into content. And then I should be able to print line uh what this content is so if we do that we should definitely get an error because we do not have a hello.txt here so let's uh let's see what happens when we do that with the error okay thread main panic there was an error reading a file at os kind not found message no such file or directory so that's that's perfect so we create the file, so touch um, hello.txt. Does that expect pass the error so you could use, um, ooh, so like the, uh, the curly, curly brackets with it. Um, you're thinking I might be able to do something like this, like that. And then, um, and then we'll see if the error comes in from, from that side. Function self message string. Okay. That's what it's bringing in. The error, however, I don't know if it's being passed in. Well, we could try this and see what happens. It might just, I'm guessing it's going to just print out a literal curly brackets.
Well, it would also help if I did not create that hello.txt file. Okay, so we panicked at, and then it prints out the literal curly brackets. So I don't think, yeah, it, I don't think it is giving us that specific error. Um, I wonder if we do unwrap. If we do unwrap like that, do we get these specific errors now? Okay, so it panicked um, on an error value. So it's exactly the same thing. Um, but of course, this is the error, which has the message that was passed in from, from here. Uh, now I'm not really sure how to force an error to happen here uh, because, well, I guess like even if it's okay, I could do something silly like, okay, we're gonna we're gonna pass an error that says, uh, "Yo, I am an error." Expected struct standard I/O error found reference. Oh, I can't I can't pass in a string to that. It's not like a throw in other languages. Um, okay, so it needs to be a standard I/O error. It takes an error. I don't know if I can, can I do new error? Like, um, can I do IO? Error. New. Oh, kind. Uh, I have no idea what kind is possible there. So I guess we can't make the function pass the error like go, for example. Well, I mean, you can pass errors around. Uh, I mean, there's still there's still there's still types. So you can we could pass it in in the parameters or something. And in this case, it's ret returning a data structure, uh, sort of like an enum, and it could either be a string or an error. And it's specifically going to be this type of error. So I can't just throw any error in there. It has to be, like, if I'm going to return this, it has to be an IO error. But this takes a type, it said, uh, which, um, let's just say it's type, uh, type silly. I don't know if that's a string. And then the error, I don't know if that's a message either. So I am an error. Let's see if this works. Expected standard IO error kind found reference. Okay, so IO error okay, what did it say? Expects enum standard IO error kind found reference. I don't see an error kind off of there. Uh, I think IO error kind. Um, I really know what this is looking for. According to the API, errors can be created from strings. Let custom error equals error new error kind other. Oh no. So, okay. Then I could do this. Aha, so here's my choices. Lots of these. We could do, um, other here. And then I am an error. Okay, so let's try this. So no matter what, if the file exists, we're gonna get this error. So let's see what gets print out with unwrap. Although we do need to touch the file. We need to touch that. Then we can run and we get, okay, uh, thread main panicked at called result unwrap on error value custom kind 
other error string error i am an error so okay so this uh i mean we're able we're able to sort of pass around custom errors around and this is how i guess this is how how we get the error back we could pass an error into a function uh because we could just say hey this function takes in an error and then does something based on it but this is how we can return either an error or a result so that's that's actually pretty that's not pretty cool however in this case we do want to return uh okay and pass in because okay is an enum i believe and we want to pass in the content so we're saying hey here here you go it's going to be the result this um now you found a uh, struct standard io error this is the documentation for error so we can say okay yeah so we can create a custom error with error like standard io bring in an error and error kind so new error new error kind which is then we, we saw we had a list of them to choose from and then a string here um which looks like we can there's a lot of different uh things that we can do for it but that's an awesome find uh thank you okay but that was all in support of like figuring out this is how we could possibly use this by uh, using unwrap so Let's look at the uh, return type of the function first. Result string io error. So that's here. This means the function is returning a value of the type result uh, type error, where the generic parameter t has been filled with the concrete type string, and the generic type e has been filled in with the concrete type io error. If this function succeeds without any problems, the code that calls this function will receive an OK value that holds a string. The username that this function read from the file. If this function encounters any problems, the code that calls this function will receive an error value that holds an instance of IO error. That contains more information about what the problems what what are what the problems were. We chose IO error as the return type of this function because that happens to be the type of the error value returned from both the operations we're calling in this function's body that might fail the file open function and the read to string method. The body of the function starts by calling the file open function. Then we handle the result value returned with a match, similar to the match in listing 9.4. Only instead of calling panic in the error case, we return early from this function and pass the error value from file open back to the calling code as this function's error value. If file open succeeds, we store the file handle in the variable f and continue. So I think this is actually something that, that looks really weird uh, coming from other languages. And I think that's because of the parentheses here. We see error. We, we do note that it's a capital E. Uh, but in something like JavaScript or, or um, Python or Java, we might think that this is a class. And uh, that we're supposed to do something like new error. And then we can pass it in the error. It will instantiate a new object and send that in. But that's not what's happening here. Instead, error is an enum, and an enum that can store data type. At least, and if, if I'm wrong, please correct me. Uh, send it either in chat here or on YouTube or tweet at me and just let me know that I'm wrong here. But I believe that, th that error is an enum. And I believe, can we actually see that? like the ERR, where that is. And I say search. And I just want the base type error. Uh, center result error. Well, this shows that it's a function. Basic usage. Well, this is ERR with a lowercase e, and we're talking about ERR with an uppercase e. So 
So I may be right, I may be wrong. Um, it feels to me like it's a new type. And a new type feels to me like that would be an enum. Um, but yes, again, if I'm wrong, please let me know so I can correct that. Uh, all right, so we are looking at the book for this. So we're not really executing error and then returning its return value. We're returning this error that's now storing the error that was passed to us. And then that that is this uh, that is this result here. And OK is also a result type. Um, but instead, it will store this side right here. Um, okay, then we create a new string in variable s and called the read to, read to string method on the file handle and f to read the contents of the file into s. The read to string method also returns a result because it might fail, even though file open succeeded. So we need an, another match to handle that, that result. If read to string succeeds, then our function has succeeded and we return the username from the file that's now in s wrapped in an okay. If read to string fails, we return the error value in the same way that we returned the error value in the match that handled the return value of file open. However, we don't need to explicitly say return because that was the last expression of the function. Uh, the code that calls this code will then handle getting either an OK value that contains a username or an error value that contains an IO error. We don't know what the calling code will do with those values. If the calling code gets an error value, it could call panic and crash the program. Use a default user um, use a default username or look up the username from somewhere other than a file, for example. We don't have enough information on what the calling code is actually trying to do, so we propagate all the success or error information upward for it to handle appropriately. This pattern of propagating errors is so common in Rust that Rust provides the question mark operator to make this easier. Okay, so that's actually really awesome. Um, Cause like I thought a question mark was just to make things um, like just shorthand for, for handling errors and panicking. But I think that's mainly in the main function. So we're about to learn a lot more about the, the question mark operator. A shortcut for propagating errors in the question mark operator. Listing 9.7 shows an implementation of read username from file that has the same functionality as it had in listing 9.6. But this implementation uses the question mark operator. Okay, so read username from file, it still returns a result with string or the IO error. Let uh, mute f equals file open, and then it has a question mark right there, and it's just a single line. Let mute s equals string new, um, f read to string, Mute S, oh my gosh, look how, okay. So here's our original function. If I take this and we comment this out and we're gonna do this like sort of again, uh, we're gonna say, okay, let our mute file um, equals, we don't have to do the match. We're instead just gonna go file open and pass it the file name and then question mark, semicolon. So that way, if it runs into an error here, it automatically returns with this string. Um, of course, it could still succeed, so it won't let us actually do anything yet. Uh, so now we need to create a new, a new string for this. Uh, do we really need to make this file mutable now? I don't know if we do. Um, we might need to, yeah, I think we do because we're doing this read, read to string and that sort of mutates it a little tiny bit. So then we're going to say, okay, let, um, uh, let mute content equals string new. So we're going to create a new string and then we're going to read from the string. Uh, so Then, okay, then we're gonna say, um, 
file dot read to string, we're going to pass it a reference to the mutable file and question mark operator semicolon. So we don't need any of this stuff. It's just going to happen and put its stuff into content. Then we're going to return the content. Oh, but we can't return the content. I believe we need to return OK. And then the content. And you. Oh, read to string is not the file. Well, it's the content we need to pass in. So this is exactly the same. It works. It works exactly the same. If we come in here and go to hello text and say, hello world, save this, we'll come back down and we'll cargo run. We get our hello world printed out. Uh, and of course we can remove hello.txt and run this again. And we'll get the errors, which is like, Hey, not found, no such file or directory. It's this one. Uh, because like we're getting these errors. Now, if we wanted to create our own custom errors, we'd have to then like catch these and like create another one instead. But if we're perfectly fine with the errors that are already created, then we send them on up with this question mark operator. Which is, um, in the past, I wanted to use question mark in the main function. And that's the reason why we had to say, okay, main can return uh, this result. It won't do anything with it. So if it finds an exception, it'll just auto panic. Uh, but that, uh, that's actually really, that's sort of like explaining what's going on and how it works. And this is making these files really small, which is also really awesome. All right. Um, The question mark placed after result value is defined to work in almost the same way as the match expressions we defined to handle the result values in listing 9.6. If the value of the result is an OK, the value inside the OK will get returned from the expression and the program will continue. If the value is an error, the value inside the error will be returned from the whole function as if we had used the return keyword so the error value gets propagated to the calling code. There's a difference between what the match expression from listing 96 and question mark do. Error values used with question mark go through the from function defined in the from trait in the standard library, which is used to convert errors from one type into another. When question mark calls the from function, the error type received is converted into the error type defined in a return type of the current function. This is useful when a return function when, when a function returns one error type to represent all the ways a function might fail, even if parts might fail for different reasons. As long as each error type implements the from function to define how to convert itself to the returned error type, question mark takes care of the conversion automatically. So that's actually really nice. Um, for example, we're, we're saying that this is IO error. Uh, I bet there's these other errors like FS. I bet there's an FS here that we could do. Um, and it will still just do that for us. In the context of listing 97, the question mark at the end of the file open call will return the value inside an OK to the variable F. If an error occurs, question mark will turn early out of the whole function and give any error value to the calling code. The same thing applies to the question mark at the end of the read to string call. The question mark operator eliminates a lot of boilerplate and makes this function's implementation simpler. We could even shorten this code further by chaining methods calls immediately after the question mark as shown in listing 9.8. Ooh, so we can chain too. So uh, here's our function. It returns this, the, the standard result with TurboFish syntax. Uh, so we're creating a new string and we say, okay, file open uh, the hello text question mark dot read to string. So is that because the input, the output of this becomes the input of this? Um, let's try it. 
So now, I'm gonna comment this out. Another way of doing this, so this is um, using question mark uh, to shorten the function And this one is using match to be explicit. Okay, and now we're going to say chaining to make the function short. Um, okay, so in this one now, uh, we're going to start with creating our string because we don't really have that. So it's let uh, a bug is crawling on my computer. Hold on just one second. Okay, <laughs> it was an actual literal uh, earwig bug that had, uh, I noticed it was crawling on the desk, got onto the power cable, I think that's how it got up. Um, this is the fun, fun part about the new place is I've got a, uh, a finished basement, so I'm down here away from everybody else. And <laughs> my computer had a bug um, and I was like, OK, I probably don't want it to actually figure out a way to get inside of the computer because then that would probably be even much worse. Of course, you know, one of these days it's going to be a spider that crawls on us and then you'll see me freak out. So uh, that'll be fun. <laughs> Anyways, where were we? Um, we were on. Um, right, so we're, we're basically doing this thing, which is we're going to now uh, combine the file open and the file read to string. So we need our, our content. So uh, let mute content. Um, equals string new. And then we want to now return or rather we just want to now do this thing so we're gonna say okay file open we're gonna hand it the uh, the file name have the question mark operator then dot and then we're going to um, read to string from whatever re is returned from this and hand it the um, the ref the mutable reference to content like that, and then we can return con uh, okay content. Yep, and the compiler is perfectly happy with this. Uh, everything just works just as well.
Uh, so that brings it from, what is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine lines the first way. One, two, three, four lines the second way. And three lines this third way. Now, I don't think I can get away with not having this mute string and just like return whatever this says right off of here because read to string doesn't return um, the actual contents. Uh, it, it takes in this reference. Um, but what I could do is take in here. So I have the file name and I could bring in, okay, I want a, uh, a reference. I think it's going to be just a reference to a, um, content. No, it's a, well, I have to do content. This is going to be a reference to a string. Can I, I think I have to do this. It's a mutable reference to a string. We will then create in main here that content, let mute content equals string new. And so instead of running it like this, we could now pass in, okay, uh, give it a reference, a mutable reference to content. You now don't get used. Mismatch type, expect to struct standard string string, founded a mutable string. Okay, expected struck. Oh, we have mute mute. So we muted it twice. Um, I think maybe. We just handed a reference to it. Okay, found type mute mute string. So this one, I don't think we need to, oh wait, we already have mute here. I probably just don't need to mute it at all. Can I just pass in content? Um, okay, found type mute string, expected type. They're saying string and stir are the same thing. Oh yeah, expected string string. So this one needs to be a string. Up oh, and that makes that happy. And mismatch types. This is expecting a string now. And this found, what did it find? It found type mute standard string string. I wonder if I can do this to a reference to a string here. Or if it needs to be a mutable. Explicit lifetime required in the type of content. I don't want to do a lifetime. Can I just do that that's a, a mutable string that I'm passing back? No. Okay, so that's the, so I could sort of do, um, I could sort of do this. Uh, the idea is that I wouldn't want to return a string at all, would I? Like, I would want to return a, um, well, whatever, I could do this, and whatever, whatever this ends up returning would be it. So if I say, um, if I just say string for right now, and we figure out what, what is this that returns? Um, found type u size. So can I just do size? Uh, 
expected enum standard result result found u size oh okay so then can i just do like okay that Ooh, look no errors Well, so I'm propagating the error out. So I am returning this error. I don't think that it's necessarily, this is probably a very bad way of doing it. Like I, w I would imagine that, uh, that we would, we would just not care about, I would just like let it panic or something. Um, but Rust allows us to do this. I'm not actually going to leave this in here because I don't think that, I think this is a terrible way of doing it. Um, at least that's what it feels like. So come back and just do, uh, let content equals here, we'll not pass it in there. Our result will still be a string. Uh, we won't take you in at all. And for you, still need you. And we won't close you. We'll put you on the end with a semicolon. At the end, we'll pass an OK and content. And you do need to be a mutable reference. All right, so we're back. So we can't, we could actually do this as a one-liner if we like sort of play some passing of references around. I don't, I like this. I like what this looks like. Um, so I think for me, this would probably be uh, as sort of condensed as I could, I could do. Let's come back here. We moved the creation of the string and s to the beginning of the function. That part hasn't changed. Instead of creating a variable f, we've changed the call with read to string directly on the result of file open hello.txt. We still have a question mark at the end of the read to string call, and we still have an OK value containing the username and s when both file open and read to string succeed rather than returning errors. The functionality is again the same as in listing 9.6 and listing 9.7. This is just different, more a more ergonomic way to write it. Sometimes you really want readability and leave the function a little bit verbose. Yes, that is absolutely true. Because like, yeah, we could one line everything uh, and then nobody would want to ever work with, with our code again. Um, you think from a readability point of view, I agree. That's why I'm gonna keep it this way. Um, the question mark operator can only be used in functions that return results. The question mark operator can only be used in returns that have a return type of result because it is defined to work in the same way as the match expression we defined in listing 9.6. The part of the match that requires a return type of result is return error e. So the return type of the function must be a result to be compatible with this return. Let's look at what happens if we use a uh, question mark in the main function, which you will call has a return type of just op open and close parentheses, like nothing at all. Um, so we just do uh, open question mark. And we actually tried this before in a previous chapter. And we, we got this where it says like, hey, you can't do this. Uh, but I think it was Avaris who, uh, who helped out and suggested, hey, you can... Uh, you can have main return a result type. And of course, it, uh, does it tell us? It doesn't really give us exactly the word, like the, the, uh, the code to use, but it does give a pretty good hint, which is like, hey, you need to return result. This error points out that we're only allowed to use question mark in a function that returns result. In functions that don't return result, when you call other functions that return result, you'll need to use a match or one of the result methods to handle the result instead of using question mark to potentially propagate the error to the calling code. 
Now that we've discussed the details of calling panic or returning result, let's return to the topic of how to decide which is appropriate to use in which cases. Um, so something they didn't really mention there is that uh, in 1.6, 1 1.26, 1 um, Rust allows us to change the return type here. So if I didn't want to use unwrap, I could use question mark here, uh, which would immediately says, hey, you can only do this. And I, I'm curious, is the, uh, is the error message going to be different than what we've got in the past? Um, so the trait standard ops try is not implemented for this. Okay, so they're not telling me exactly what they're just saying like, hey, you could only do better returns. But I believe that here in main, we can say that this function returns uh, result type. And result wrong number of arguments expected to found zero. Um, and so we can do this one which is OK and error. So I think we can do this, right? OK, error. So like to be as generic as, as possible. Expected type, found variant, not a type. Oh, it, it sort of suggested that I try colon colon, OK. Error. Does this work better? Expected identifier. Okay, so it didn't. It didn't like that. Let's go actually look up what the appropriate way to use is. Uh, so it is um, Rust main return result. So I know they can do it in a brand new one. The question is, am I going to get a recent, um, a recent enough issue from this? Um, okay, so this is back from 2015. We would need to find very latest things because it was only like right now. Okay, so this is the list is 2017. And I believe this change was made in like the last month or two. This is open, opened in 2017. Three days ago, okay. So they're still chatting about it. So I thought I had seen and used a uh, question mark in main all right I can't remember the exact syntax we did so let's just go and take a look at um, at our previous code so we'll just come down here. I don't remember if it's which chapter it is, so we'll just open up. We'll just open up code for everything. Um, so let's just go backwards and take a look at what previous things we have. So not propagating errors in results. Main is not returning anything here. This is the one we're working on in panic. We're not returning anything. Maybe in chapter eight, did I do it? Maybe it was in my department lookup that I did it. Yeah, here it is. Okay, function main. Um, it returns IO result and then turbo fish syntax, absolutely nothing. And that allows us to use the, uh, uh, this allows us to use the, uh, the question mark syntax. But, at the very end of it, we didn't understand why we had to put OK with just empty parentheses in it. But this is the reason why, because we're returning. So IO results. 
But we're saying absolutely nothing is getting returned here. Just like empty parentheses. Of course, now it's saying, hey, you're not really returning um, a result. So at the very end, we have to deal with that and say, okay, fine, we'll return okay and pass it in an empty parentheses without semicolon to make it return right here. And then it works. But now this question mark will actually work for us. The only problem that I have with this syntax is that uh, you need to know about this feature and what the result is doing. Uh, with unwrap, I feel like the word unwrap sort of helps out a little bit. And then when it crashes, uh, it gives a, um, uh, it's going to give a, a stack trace that comes right to this line. So I could sort of go back and forth on whether or not I want to use question mark here, um, or whether it's best just to have this friggin, um, we could have, yeah, the unwrap. And just have a good old normal main. So I'm still unsure about which one I want. But with that being said, I believe that we have now reached the end. Uh, crashing anonymously is bad. Um, PNQPNP, <laughs> welcome. Good morning. Welcome to the stream. We're about to uh, close down, but uh, crashing anonymously is bad. Yes. Um, which. The, that's one of those things like the it's not going to return the the proper result because it's not like returning an error i don't know um i guess i would have to 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 think about it for a while however the other ones do have a stack trace do have the message that sort of helps out a bit so i think that's good um let's take a look where we're at we are so we're done with this entire chapter if we move on to the next one, we're now going to be in chapter 9.3, to panic or not to panic. So let's take this URL and let's update our readme here. Uh, so currently, this is what we're in now, uh, to panic or not to panic. Maybe I'll just change this to be chapter 9.3. To panic or not to panic and uh, so that's where we're going to continue on tomorrow morning uh, let's see let's also update all of our code here so um, learning about uh, so not really like panicking in this last one a uh, question mark operator and uh, what else? What else did we do in here? It was sort of like the um, and propagating errors, and we'll send up all of those. So those are going to be in the GitHub repo. I have that uh, in the the stream description down below. If you're watching live or you're seeing this on Twitch, or if you're seeing this as an archive on YouTube, I have it in the stream. Uh, in the video description uh, to find the uh, the GitHub, um, well, the GitHub links. Uh, I also have a link to Twitch and then I have a link to YouTube, so everything going back and forth. Uh, when I stream, I generally will also tweet out, hey, I'm live, come watch me, or if you would like to get a notification directly from the services, in case I forget, since that's kind of a manual operation right now, uh, you can follow my channel here on Twitch to get those notifications or you can subscribe on YouTube uh, just to, to see the videos when they come in. I have a playlist where all of these, uh, these rest things are going, are going in there. Uh, with that, I am doing these, uh, these learning rest streams every weekday morning at 7 a.m. Mountain Time. Uh, and with that, it is now 8 a.m. So it's time for me to get ready to go to work and begin my day. But uh, thank you so much for everybody coming out, chatting, uh, learning rest with me. This is, uh, this is really awesome, and I'm looking forward to continuing on. Um, and with that, uh, I am going to get out of here. So once again, thank you very much, and see you next time.